Ruby Frankie's husband, Kevin Frankie, wanted to charge his own daughter with burglary because she wanted to get some things for her siblings? What? -A -A What's up, y'all? It's your boy Pascal back at it again with another pop up video. Be sure to follow me on all my social medias, The Pascal Show, one word. Hit that like button down below. Let's not forget to crush that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're watching on Facebook, make sure you crush that follow button on my Facebook page if this is your first time checking out this channel right here. Anyway, we got to jump into this story. Now, this uh, these are new updates revolving around the eight passengers, Ruby, Frankie, Jody, Hildebrandt situation okay if you haven't been following it or if you need a little bit of a catch-up be sure to go and check out my playlist i got a whole playlist of of things just beat by beat things that have been been, been going on recently and it's been absolutely insane but even but things have gotten even more crazy because now we got some more information here about kevin frankie and literally you could tell like either he's being controlled or he is completely disconnected with reality. Like he had, he has no care for his children. It feels like, okay, I'll explain in a little bit, but then again, like I said, you just heard a little bit of my theory here. I got theories revolving around a lot of stuff that's being told here in this article. So let's get into this. Okay. As they say, Kevin Frankie wanted to charge Sherry Frankie with burglary. And it does explain there's been a lot of conversation about, oh, their front door was busted open, so on and so forth. Now we get more insight on who actually busted their front door open, why the front door was was broken down, so on and so forth. So let's get into this this article here. OK. And this is what's breaking right now, um, or at least as of the recording of this video right here. OK, so newly obtained Police reports outlined how some of Ruby Frankie's children and family members were able to access her home after police served a, a warrant and broke down the front door of the home. According to a police report, Ruby's husband, Kevin, who admitted he hadn't been in the home for more than a year, wanted to file charges against his daughter who went into the home and took some of the property. Now, what's crazy to me is that this dude thinks that he has something to say about them going, the kids going in to this home to get some property, specifically Sherry, who obviously has been disconnected with the family. She has been very concerned over her, her siblings. Apparently, she is watching some of the kids, some of, his, uh, some of her siblings as well, uh, not Kevin, which, of course, we already know Kevin's working really, really hard to try to get uh, custody of the children, which I hope to God he does not because he is not a part of the solution. He is a part of the problem, guys. He is a part of the problem. But this doesn't make any sense. He hasn't been in the domain. He hasn't been in the crib for, for nearly more than more than a year. And yet he's got a problem with Sherry going in there and getting some stuff. Now, I keep wondering what's making him so concerned, right? What's making his butthole get all puckered up? What's concerning him so damn much? Real talk. What is the property that they're taking that makes him so freaking concerned, especially when he doesn't even, I'm sure he doesn't even know if the, the what's been new or what's changed inside that house. Give me a freaking break, right? But uh, sorry, I digress. Let's continue. A report obtained by Two News shows Springville police officers back at Ruby Frankie's home on August 31st, the day they executed a warrant at the property. The eldest sister, Sherry, the one who called the police, asked to do a welfare check on her siblings because she was that concerned. That's Sherry. Had gone to the home to gather clothing and personal items for her two sisters, whom I, if, from what I understand, she is watching over those children right now as we speak. So a DCFS caseworker was also at the home gathering items for the two children or for the two other children who are in state state's custody in southern Utah. And these were the other two children that were, of course, found in in Jody Hildebrandt's home. And in very and in very bad shape. We all know that this is the this is the the two children that sparked off all of this. OK, that started this story. All right. And thank God that little kid 
crawled or climbed out of a window and seeked salvation. Real talk. Thank God for that. So the caseworker informed police they believed Kevin Frankie might be at the home and that, quote unquote, he may not be cooperative which is why they requested police assistance. I don't blame them. When police arrived, the caseworker, Sherry, and other family members were already in the home. They, they I mean, that's because they bust down the, the door, bust down the front door, okay? All of them were further advised that they should not collect any items that do not belong to them or aren't needed for the children, the documents read. Two News obtained a third police report from Springville Police outlining a phone call from Frankie, Kevin Frankie, okay, reporting a burglary on September 1st. So what, did he, he didn't know that, that, that people were going to go into the crib? Or is he just being a drama queen? I'm thinking he's being a little bit dramatic here. So let's go into this. Kevin allegedly reported that electronic items, specifically his electronic journals, were missing. He told officers, quote unquote, he believes his oldest daughter, Sherry, is responsible due to a statement she made in court day. Now, let me just say something really quick. He's that concerned over electronic journals. He he hasn't even been inside the crib. He hasn't been inside the crib. In over a year. Who's to say that these electronic journals, after some time when they haven't been touched, these are kids, right? What are the chances of those kids actually taking those electronic journals over and using them? Like, you know, I'm I'm assuming it's like a like an iPad or or something of that sort, right? A tablet of some sort. You know for a fact, if you got something laying around and it's electronic and you got kids and you don't touch it for a while, that kid's going to take over that that electronic device. Let's keep it straight funky. So why does he even give a damn about something that's well over a year that he hasn't even had in his possession for well over a year? It just doesn't make any sense to me. The officer told Kevin the front door had been broken in after a search warrant was served days prior and not broken by his oldest daughter. So they said this in a statement. Kevin stated that Sherry is not allowed in the home and that he believes she entered unlawfully and he wants her charged with burglary. That doesn't make any sense, right? They got a search warrant and they have police there. So, uh, yeah, unlawfully my ish, okay? They continue. Kevin states that he does not want any of the children mentioned mentioned in the home at this time. I again explained that they needed to get essential items of theirs that were in the home, which he did not seem to think was relevant. He was like, no, I don't want any of these kids, any of them to have any access to anything. And this is also, by the way, the same dude who's sitting here going, I want to get my family back together. I'll do anything to get my family back together. Yet he's the one going, I don't give a damn if if they need any of this stuff. They shouldn't be in my crib. Same crib he hasn't been in for well over a year, might I add. Okay. And also, again, the craziness that was going on right under his nose to his children. And now this dude is sitting here saying, oh, yeah, no, they don't need any of these items. Hmm. Sounds kind of familiar, right? The attitude feels the theme seems to be quite common within this couple don't you think moving on the report mentions that sherry brought the items to the springville police department and they were given to uh, kevin a short time later so among the items were three tablets three cell phones three camera gopros a stack of written journals and three passports for Kevin, Ruby, and another one of their children. Now, the journals, the GoPros, the cell phones, and the tablets, you know, to me, I feel like 
you know, kids could be drawing, kids could be writing in those journals, so on and so forth. The GoPros, I mean, they, you know, the cameras and GoPros, I mean, let's be real, there could be footage on there that they want to have. You know, kids can be, will be kids as well. Games to play on the tablets, so on and so forth. The only thing I keep wondering about is the, the passports, okay, of Ruby and Kevin. I'm wondering why that was taken out. But then again, maybe Sherry and the kids were scared of the parents maybe kicking rocks, going on the run if she was ever to be bailed out, if she was granted bail. Let's just start there. Let's, let's not forget that, too. The complainant was informed <clears throat> that we would not be charging his daughter with anything as her intent was not to deprive him of any items. She had previously been allowed in the home, and he had not been in the home, admittedly, for 13 months. This is what the officer wrote in the report. The officer said that he explained to Kevin over the phone that due to the circumstances surrounding the incident, he, quote unquote, we would not be filing charges against Sherry. And that would be considered a civil issue due to her intent not being to deprive him of those items. He, Kevin, advised that he was going to sue the police department. Kevin was very displeased with this answer and advised that we would be hearing from his attorney. Ain't that something else? Ain't that something else? He got the stuff. He did end up getting the stuff, as it says right here. Okay? She brought the items to Springville, uh, the Springville Police Department, and they were given to Kevin a short time later. So they didn't even have the stuff in. Sherry didn't even have the stuff in her possession for very long. And she gave all that crap back to Kevin. And yet he was still going, I'm going to sue. You're going to hear from my lawyer. You know, it's the same lawyer who's been all up in the videos. Doing all these interviews, basically doing some sort of damage control tour. Okay, on every single thing. And hey, hey, whatever. It is what it is, but it's very, very strange in my personal opinion. But even it says here, Two News had an interview scheduled with Kevin's attorney, Randy Kester, but it was canceled due to a current state of the juvenile court case. Kester shared a statement with Two News regarding these reports. He says that Kevin didn't do either. He and Sherry are working together on bygones and res resuming a loving and healthy father-daughter relationship. Kevin is still trying to understand and correct the upside-down world that was dealt to him. Ah. Yeah, it's a lot to deal with all at once. Now, okay, let me continue. Sky Lazaro, a criminal defense attorney not involved in the case, told the news that police reports are revealing. I, yeah, I agree. I think it gave us some insight into the family dynamic more than anything. It really seemed to outline that there probably was some disconnect with this family. This attorney also said the information in the reports tends to maybe lend some credibility that there was probably or potentially some problems there. Clearly, this shows that there's a dynamic in this household, and that dynamic is very, very bad. Sherry and Kevin, it seems like they are like they don't get along right now. Understandably, though, I understand on Sherry's part why they would not get along. But the other part is, what is he trying to hide? Where he's willing to charge his own daughter with burglary? His own daughter going, hey. No, 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 no. She's not supposed to be going into that house. They served the search warrant. They were assisted by police officers. And they went into the house with those police officers and some other members of the family to help them retrieve items that those kids wanted. That's it. And this guy has the audacity to want to charge his own child, his own pride and joy, with burglary. Damn right it shows you a dynamic. It shows you that the parents don't give a, don't give two dams about their children. That they're beneath them. And that Kevin thinks 
Ruby's way up here, and the kids are on the dirt, all the way down to the ground. Their, their livelihood, their, their safety, etc., is nothing to him. This shows to me exactly what kind of man he is, what kind of father he is. And this father's trash. You got a daughter that is trying to take care of the kids that you should be taking care of. Your wife shouldn't be locked up right now. There, it should be a wholesome, safe, and loving environment underneath the Frankie roof. But it's not. And now you're in this situation. And by doing things like this, you are only showing your true character. And like I've said a million times before, when somebody shows you who they truly are, believe them. Anyway, guys, that's the video. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Hit that like button down below. And don't forget to crush that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're watching on Facebook, please be sure to crush that follow button on my Facebook page. It'd be great to have you a part of the Pascal Show family on both platforms. Anyway, it's time to get going. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys in the next video. This is the Pascal Show. Bye. P-A-S-C-A-L. You are now rocking with that dude, Pascal. We be going wild.